we're on a solar photovoltaic course this week. Thank you, Lenny and Marie. So we're here in the pub. Oh, you're going to get in trouble, mate. I'm the bus is going to pull right. over now. Good evening, dear viewers. Welcome back to a late night episode of Artisan Electrics here at my hotel room in Gatwick. We're on a solar photovoltaic course this week. Corey's joining me too, so we're both going to be doing the course together. It's Sunday night and I've just arrived at the hotel. I've got the train in from Cambridge to our train journey, followed by a very expensive Uber. The most expensive five minute Uber I've ever had actually, but I think that was a silly mistake to get the Uber from the airport. And now I'm here at the hotel, I chose the Premier Inn because it's more comfortable than the travel lodge that I sent Corey and John to the other day. So we were trying to level up our hotel game a bit and it's pretty comfortable and clean and uh, the breakfast's great. So I'm looking forward to a nice big fry up in the morning. But this video, I just thought I'd share with you this whole journey throughout this week. So I'm just gonna kind of vlog it as much as I can, show you some of the stuff that we get up to. I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you much of the actual in the course because I don't think we'll be allowed to film. But whether it's good or not, I have no idea what to expect, to be honest. We're doing the BPEC solar course. I don't really do a City and Guilds one anymore, so this is kind of the only option. But it's a full week course, five days. And it's with Trade Skills For You, who we've done various other courses with before. So that's why we chose them. And the location is not too difficult. So I've rocked up here. No idea what to expect, to be honest. We've had this course booked in for months, but it kept getting delayed because of the whole pandemic situation. But finally, we're here. So I'm really happy that we're here. The thing that I'm a little bit worried about is the fact that I'm not really prepared for this at all. Like, I don't even know if I'm supposed to have a book with me or not. I don't think there is a book, but I've not really been doing any swatting up at all. I've not even brought any work clothes with me. I've just kind of brought jeans and t-shirts and stuff. I didn't even bring any work boots. I kind of thought about that on the way down here. It's like, oh, if we're gonna be doing some kind of work in booths, do I need to actually wear steel toe caps. I'm hoping not, <laughs> but we'll see. I'll probably end up having to go out and buy a pair of boots at some point. It's a little bit late, so I'm gonna get an early night and just try to get a good night's sleep so that I can be fresh, ready for the morning. Corey's rocking up tomorrow morning. He's gonna be joining me straight at the course because he's had a busy weekend and he's been traveling around gallivanting with his girlfriend. He will be here for the rest of the week. You'll hopefully hear from him as well and see what he thinks about the course. And together we will share our journey with you. We'll take you along for the ride and hopefully it'll be interesting for you. If it is, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to promote our videos out to other people. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos. Let's get into it. See you in the morning. Well, good morning. It is 6 a.m. I'm up. Didn't sleep that well, to be honest. Um, yeah, takes a bit of getting used to being in a new bed. It's pretty comfy here anyway, so can't complain too much. I'm going to get up now, do a bit of a workout or some stretching or something, have a shower, smash out a few bits of paperwork that I need to do, have some breakfast, and then head over to the um, course. Hey, Corey's here. He made it. Better late than never. No, he was two minutes late. It's fine. What do you think, Corey? How did it go? I thought it was good. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that we'll probably never use. A lot of Pythagoras theorem and cosine and power factors. And you think realistically, there's software and inverters and technology that are going to do a lot of those things for you. But it's useful to know. And I felt like the quality of training was good. Yeah, it's interesting because he did both of our EV courses I think mine like three years ago and yours a few months ago and he is an actual electrician who does install solar PV arrays like he was telling us that he installed his own one right back in the day in like 2010 when the uh, feed-in tariffs first came in and stuff so um, yeah he clearly not only knows the theory but he also knows the practical and he keeps his hand in like he works part-time here as a teacher and then the rest of the time he's out actually on roofs fitting solar PV systems. I appreciate that because I think it's good to be taught by someone who actually is out there in the real world installing the stuff. So we are here at Tesco 
We've got to get passport photos. Yeah, there's quite a lot of paperwork for this BPEC thing. They're quite stringent about it. So we've got to get passport photos, chucking it down with rain, and then uh, back to hotel room, quick shower, and then out for dinner, I reckon. What do you think? I found a pub that does Indian slash British pub food. So as you're half Indian anyway, I thought you might, I wanted you to feel at home, you know? So so. You have to clarify for the table to do, table for two that it's a purely business relationship. Yeah, we're, we'd like a, a business uh, table for two, please. <laughs> Have you got any conferencing systems at your tables? I'll tell you what as well, it was really weird because this morning when we turned up at Trade Skills For You, instantly people recognised me and they were like, hey, I was just, wa-. one guy, he was like, oh, I was watching a video on the way down here about fault finding because I got my fault finding test today. So that was kind of weird, but cool. And then at lunchtime, I wandered around the centre and there was three guys they recognized me and uh, were asking a few questions and having a chat so that was nice i guess when you're in such a niche industry uh, quite a few of them asked me for your autograph actually today Corey. so uh, yeah i signed i'm I've gonna signed sneakily people, yeah um, builders bumps actually. yeah, yeah. <laughs> handing out signed klein screwdrivers yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> anyway i've got the merch on look Corey's got his work gear on. Have you um, tried out your merch, Corey? It's actually really good, really nice quality. It's in the wash. I wore it on the weekend and uh, it's in the wash now. But I'm actually very impressed at the quality. It fit really nicely. I will definitely be repping it in the videos. Your sales are going to go through the roof. All right, let's brave this rain. Hello, I have of course packed just the essentials for, for staying away. I prefer working away with Jordan <laughs> because the room is significantly better. I think the plan is Jordan's going to sleep there, I'm going to sleep on the chaise lounge. No, I'm joking, we've got our own room. <laughs> but it's significantly nicer than the, <laughs> than the other hotel, which we won't name for legal implications. We'll just call it the Ravel Rodge. Um, What's that stain on the floor though? That, th- that really does actually look like blood, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking too soon. Should we do should we do CSI analysis? <laughs> do you want to get some close up shots? Oh no, that's, that's not blood. It's red sharpie, isn't it? Or makeup. Just tell yourself it's red sharpie. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. I, I cut myself all the time anyway. If that's the only bodily fluid in this room, then I'm not fussed. It's significant uphill from, from the other place. And look at this, they've even installed a, uh, a dryer so you can you know, like dry yourself off. I forgot to tell you though that I did, do, uh, I did a bit of a deal with the hotel management. I told them that you do an EICR in the room if we if they gave us a ten pound discount. So I actually so, um, I reckon how does this thing even unscrew? It's got a knife on me. <laughs> you got oh when you're working in these parts. Ooh. Ooh, top top end bus bar. Nice. Probably. So what do you reckon? I reckon well that's a very light tile that. That is oh it's not a proper Oh, okay, bit of unistrut there, all the twin nerfs coming in, alright. Interesting, that's not proper fire compartmentalisation, whatever you'd call it, <laughs> that's not been done properly, that's just a little bit of putty. Yeah, not bad going. Pass or fail? Um, yeah, I'd give it, I'd probably give it a pass on immediate impression. I'd like to give a little talk. Oh, oh no! Oh, well, RCD test. RCD test, it passed, sure. it's an RCCB. Yeah, now we're going to rock up now. Yeah. The, uh, the hotel electrician police. Oh, actually, it's well out of date. It's went out in 2015. I bet you bought nice premium wash products, haven't you? I've just got to use that it's stuff. My in there. Yeah, I've just got to use that. Actually, so I did use that today in my shower. It's not bad. It's not bad. Oh, it's not bad. So, so, so I've got no volume same. tomorrow. Then you know so, what's you know so what's happened. Quite Unless if it's not relabeled it. So, what's the plan? Food, 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 food. ASAP. So we're here in the pub and we're doing Indian. Corey, did I choose a good <laughs> restaurant? You've come up top, that is probably, coming from an Anglo-Indian, that is, is seriously, seriously good onion bhaji. That, that, is. that is the best onion bhaji I've ever had. That lamb shank looks amazing. Garlic naan looks insane also. It's so good. And the beer's good. And what did you go for? We got a really spicy one, but I made a mistake there. I ordered that thinking this is a proper Indian restaurant and it's not going to be spicy. But now I realise it's proper. I'm thinking that's going to be really spicy. (laughs) 
So um, stay tuned for Corey blowing his face off. Good morning guys and girls, it is day two and I slept better last night, so that's always a good start. It's not raining outside, even better. And you've got a big fat English breakfast to look forward to, <laughs> so that's the third excellent start to the day. I'm feeling a bit more energetic today, so that's good after that ridiculously large Indian meal last night. So it's like seven o'clock, I'm going to smash out a few quotes for EV chargers before I head down for breakfast because I've got a list of about 50 quotes to do. <laughs> so I'll chip away at a few of those and then um, head down for breakfast, meet Corey. Coffee is needed, I must admit, usually as soon as I wake up, first thing I do, coffee. And uh, I'm missing that right now because I'm not gonna have any of that instant stuff that they put in the room. It's just, I can't stretch myself to go that low, unfortunately. Probably see you at breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. What have you got for breakfast? I'm a bit confused. I've got veggie sausages, but I do also have bacon. That is confusing. Yeah, it's confusing. But that is like by fifty percent. I suppose yeah. like oh, half no. half the amount of animals have died. Half the amount of suffering. Yeah. A lot of animals died for me. I appreciate them. I'm going low carb today for breakfast because I had way too many carbs last night at that Indian restaurant. Is that HP sauce? The, the source of artisans. Daddy's source is for heathens, but HP is the way forward. So did you sleep well? Slept amazingly well. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Thank you, Lenny Henry. <laughs> Are you looking forward to another epic day of learning? I'm looking forward to another epic day, but I actually learned a lot yesterday when I was actually looking back at my book last night. What, they gave us a book? Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't really go through it properly, but I was just looking at my notes, thinking actually all the bits about um, yield and surface area and that is stuff that if you had just had that plot in front of you, you never would have figured it out, would you? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, I was. Yeah, was good. we did get quite a good, good amount of value out of it yesterday. Did they tell us what we're learning today? I think we're carrying on with science. Yeah. We need more maths today than we're going through. But first, eating. It feels like a sparky holiday this week, doesn't it? It actually does. It's a well-needed sparky holiday. It's like, from the channel. it's like, look, it's 8.32. Normally, we'd be like halfway through our second EV charger of the day today. <laughs> or Corey would, anyway. I'd be like, I'd be deep in the office, like plowing through quotes. I woke up at seven today. That's like a massive lie-in for me. I woke up about 25 minutes ago. <laughs> but the coffee... It just makes me gag every time I try to drink it. I just, I need caffeine, but this is just not, it's just not happening. It's like, it's like um, brown water with mud and it's been heated up. It's pretty bad. So we're walking home because it's good to stretch your legs after a day in the classroom. How did you find it today, Corey? It's good. There's a bit more brain work today. A lot more maths and science and all coming together. A little bit of practical. But uh, I kind of enjoy that side of it. I'm a bit of a, I'm a, bit of a nerd. So I quite like the science. Yeah, I enjoyed today because it felt like all the theory stuff that we were learning in class yesterday started to make more sense why we needed to know it today because you could see how when you're doing the commissioning you need to be able to do the tests to verify that the various readings that you should get when you calculate and design the system that you were actually getting those readings and therefore the system's working properly so it was really cool to be able to actually do the testing today like do the current testing do the voltage testing and see how it all works out in real life. Corey's just about to jump off a bridge. I just saw a duck. <laughs> Have you noticed in every video that as soon as Corey sees an animal or an insect, he's instantly distracted? It's like, oh, a spider, I oh, like a bee. That. And it's just like, in the middle of a, a sentence, he'll be talking to, to the camera or something. And then in the middle of a sentence, he'll be like, oh, 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 a rabbit, you know? <laughs> so the phone just rang and we got interrupted. I can't remember what. What are we even talking about now? We are super power walking. We're gonna go for the same restaurant tonight, but might do English tonight instead of Indian. What do you reckon? I'm gonna go Indian again. I felt, I don't know. 
still been curried out after last night. So if they've got anything good English on the menu, I might go for that, but we'll see. Still not that, hung not that hungry yet, actually. No, I'm not but, hungry yet. Um, in an hour, I will be. I'm going to take the stairs up. Maybe go a couple of times. <laughs> I hate the being sat down all day. I couldn't be an office worker. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have a gym at Premier Inn? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, see you all later. Good evening all. It is dinner time once again. I've gone for a chicken burger. Corey, what have you gone for? Chicken and spinach curry. It's looking pretty good. I think this could turn into a food vlog. Yeah, we, we're definitely, we're going to quit electrics and do a food vlog and get Nathan to follow us around with the camera. And we'll just eat loads of amazing food and film it. So let us know in the comments if you'd be a fan of the artisan food vlog. vlog. That would be cool. This chicken burger is a beast. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you. That is an absolute beast. Look at that. Whoa. Like me or the burger? Ah, uh, oh yeah. Well, both really. Garlic? Is that garlic naan? No, this is just buttered naan today. Buttered, I just buttered. He's, he's going minimalist, and then a beer chicken for the vegan. Corey's on coke. I'm on the beer still. He's being a good boy. We will see you all tomorrow morning, bright and early. Hello guys, so it is lunch break and um, I'm using a bit of time to catch up on a few EV charging quotes and Corey's brought me a coffee, so thank you Corey. Corey's over here. Catch up on catch up on <laughs> <laughs> his epic Instagram following. You got chips, right? That's all. I got chips, but you know in the walk over I had a couple and in the walk over I've kind of gone off them. Well they're probably cold by now, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And they are like Garage, like, are they from just like a, a garage? It's a little food truck. Oh, right. Okay. Not the greatest. No I'm, off, I'm off guys. lunch. Um, I'm not having lunches at the moment, I'm just having a massive breakfast and massive dinner. <laughs> yeah. I'm on lunch and I'm having a massive breakfast and massive dinner. <laughs> <laughs> You've got about to maintain it, you know. Maintain well, he's got to have something to work off when he goes back to the gym next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today it's been interesting. Huh? It's been like um, a bit more practical stuff, like how to fix the panels onto the roof and all the various different fixing methods and stuff. I found today's a bit really boring. Yeah. I found the theory was a You like the science of it, Yeah, don't I you? like the science. I mean, I feel like when it comes to fixing a panel, just give me a panel and let me figure it out. Or, you know, like, they kind of have to teach you how to suck eggs a little bit. Whereas if you're um, the science, you're actually learning a lot of new things, like the calculations and that. It's all new to me anyway more interesting whereas i like i grew up like learning about solar panel calculations so for me it's just like i, I can do it in my sleep you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm more of a practical person i'm not really into all the maths and stuff i just like doing things so when i understand how the maths are important in your everyday job then it clicks for me but just doing calculations of formulas does my head in a little bit unless i know why i need to know them i'm a bit like i don't like learning things unless there's a point to it like, how does this actually help me in real life? That's what I've enjoyed about the stuff that we have learned is knowing where it actually applies in real life. Lunch break is nearly finished, so I'm gonna get back to you. See you all in a bit. We've got sea trout. And so now we've got scallops, calamari, and chips. So, a little update for you guys. It is lunchtime, day four, Thursday. Got some solar panels behind me and the sun is shining, so that's really nice. We've had some exams today. We did some kind of like written exercises which are actually graded. So today it's the first of that really. Seems to have gone okay so far. Tomorrow is more of the practical stuff. I think we've got a bit of practical this afternoon as well uh, but it's kind of like the exams are spread over two days. Thursday and Friday is basically most of the examinations. It's quite a lot involved. Yeah last night went into London 
for a little date night with my wife Lisa, which was really nice. We went out to a really amazing restaurant and stayed in a fancy hotel and stuff. So uh, I'll show you a few little clips of that. But yeah, that was really fun. But I had a bit of an early start this morning to get back in from central London to here on time. But I just about made it. All in all, the course is going well so far. It's quite enjoyable, quite interesting. I'm learning a lot. I think I feel like I understand the whole concept of solar a lot better now and also feel like I'll be a lot more confident in planning jobs going forward and knowing exactly how to calculate the number of panels to put on a roof and what actual output that will give for the customer and things. So it's definitely been a worthwhile experience. We'll see if we pass the exam or not. <laughs> That's the next step. End of day four, we are done. It's super early, it's like 10 to two. So uh, we smashed through our assessments today and got done early. So we're like, hey, let's finish early. How was it for you today, Corey? It was actually really good. I like it because I feel like I've learned loads. And what I've learned has actually helped me understand why I've done things previously, like in previous jobs and things on renewable energy without really thinking about it. So quite enjoyed it. I've realized as well, it's definitely more of a course than a test. Did you find that? Like the exam, they kind of they kind of help guide you through it a little bit. Not like coaching, like I, I'm, I think you probably could fail. I think is it if you get it wrong twice, you'll fail. But like I misread a question, which was, I should have just read the question more thoroughly. So I've worked out the percentage lost on percentage loss on the yield annually and all this thing made like a real complicated technical answer and I'm thinking why is everyone else just rushing through this answer when I'm like still here writing <laughs> and um uh, like, like doing Pythagoras theorem. I've done like the KK and... value for the different systems and like on the shading factors and i would got it all perfect and it was completely unnecessary because if I'd read the question it would have just said one's they're both the same energy output one's parallel one's series is the um arrangement parallel or series going to affect the energy output and the answer was no <laughs> no, no it, it's not going to <laughs> yeah it's a lot of this is about how you read the, it's like yeah. about just read the question properly and if you read the question properly it's a lot simpler than you think sometimes i think the level of training is really good though yeah he is good the instructor and he he helps you to understand like how things work in real life as well rather than just on paper which i like yeah, I can really visualise now, like, planning systems and, you know, seeing the roofs. And when I go out to quote for jobs, looking at the roof, working out how many panels we're going to put on there, calculating the kilowatt peak output and all that stuff, it's, um, yeah, it's good. It's quite, I'm looking forward to getting stuck in and doing some jobs now. Yeah, same, I can't wait. I'm going to be watching, like, more of the videos online as well, I think. Like, Sam from Oval Renewables. He's got some really good videos out there. I'm gonna watch a few of his. I feel like I have more of an understanding of it now, like why he's doing certain things. And it will enable us to, just like if you were watching the artisan videos and you've never done any electrical course, it'll probably be, a lot of it would be quite alien to you. But then when you start learning, like start an apprenticeship or a course or whatever, you, you'll learn even more because it all makes more sense. So yeah, you'll probably find that now we watch those, those bits and pieces. A new chapter. Looking forward to it. So, I'm gonna have a nap. I'm knackered. I'm gonna go for a drive. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So, it is day five, Friday, final day. Looking forward to getting finished now. It's been a long week. I was so tired last night. I slept like a log. I was absolutely exhausted. I think, um, although it's not that intense, the course, it's just a lot of stuff to take in, you know and the tests, you know, the examinations and stuff like that. Well, like any examination, it just kind of takes it out of you a little bit. So I had an early night last night and I'm feeling quite fresh and awake this morning, ready for the final day. And today it's gonna to be like practical examination about doing the commissioning and testing and stuff like that. And then also we're gonna be doing a multiple choice exam, which lasts, I think it's like three hours or something multiple choice so hopefully it's not gonna be too difficult but it's a weird one because you've got to get 100% and if you don't then you give it back to them they mark the, the ones that are wrong and then they give it back to you and you've got another you've got another try and then on that next try you've got to get 80% um, and if you don't get 80% then you fail I guess <laughs> So it's a bit of a weird way of doing it. It's not City and Guilds, you see, it's BPEC, and so it's slightly different the way that it's all set up. So I'm not really used to this way of doing it, but it is what it is. Main thing is we've learned a lot and we're feeling a lot more confident now about doing solar. So I'll let you know how the exams go. I'm about to go down and have some breakfast with Corey, check out of the hotel, and then, yeah, 
we're out of here. Last breakfast of the day, Corey. Last breakfast of the week, even. Last breakfast well, that's of the day. Like, that sounds very <laughs> ominous. <laughs> This is my last breakfast. My last, last breakfast of the course. Last night, my last supper. You're going to knock me off. Oh, coffee's coming. That's a good sign. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. What are you going for? Yeah, could I go for a scrambled egg, two hash browns, three veggie sausages, some mushrooms, and two tomatoes, please? Can we get some more brown sauce, please, as well? I'm gonna enjoy this. My last major fry up before I have to go back on the normal regime. Keto. Corey, what the heck are those? Those are veggie sausages. Call you Linda McCartney, shall we? With your veggie sausages. Linda McCartney, she's relatively you know that You know that HP sauce is not vegan, huh? It's got like cow's bladders in it. I actually am not a vegan, I just fancy Linda McCartney, anything that gets me closer to Paul and John. <laughs> We're done. It is complete. So, um, Corey had to reset the exam like seven times, but he got there in the end. Sorry, did you actually finish? <laughs> I wasn't sure. I've gone and like read War and Peace in the time it took you to finish the exam. <laughs> like, I'm slow and methodical. I double check all my answers. So I didn't have to come back many times on the answers. But um, yeah, Corey smashed it out of the park, to be honest. You were finished like way before everyone else. That was like, I, I seriously thought that you'd like missed a whole paper or something because <laughs> you were finished so early. But yeah, all good. We are done. We passed because I don't think they would let us home if we hadn't. Um, so it's just a case of waiting for the certificates and stuff now. I was a little bit like freaked out by the calculations right at the end because the whole exam we didn't need to do any calculations and I was like, oh brilliant, because maths is not really my forte. Uh, and then right at the end in the practical it totally threw me because we had to do this calculation the for irradiance calculation. the irradiance yeah. uh, versus the current that we measured to calculate whether the output of the system was as it should be basically and it just totally threw me because that was the calculation that i basically hadn't really practiced at all and i couldn't find it in the book anywhere so i was totally freaking out but i got there in the end and yeah apart from that it was all fine really fault finding was easy it's like uh oh the cable is slashed or yeah. uh the connectors are broken yeah, so easy inverter I thought it was a trick. I was yeah like, oh, there must be something hidden yeah fault finding is more my forte really so but that was easy and um the testing itself is actually really easy as well so all in all, it was a good week. Felt like a little bit of an electrician's holiday, really. Like, uh, we've had early finishes all week, which we're not really used to. Like today, it's um, it's only half past 12 and we're done. So Two and a half hours drive back, though, if you've seen the traffic. Oh, you're taking the train? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm on the train. I'm chilled. Is it going to take you two and a half two hours, hours to get home? Yeah. Uh, it both ways looks so much traffic. The Heathrow way is like two hours 50. Yeah. The, um, the Dartford crossing way is like two hours 30. Nightmare. Should we start a little bit of controversy? Let's do it. Do you know what? There's a lot of short course people that are in that same training centre. By the way, the training, I think, has been of really good quality. I don't know about... Yeah, I think it's not that we've got been much great. I couldn't have really yeah. asked for much more. Yeah. Um, I think it was good. Yeah. But um, a lot of the people that are in there are doing short courses. You're probably watching this video now, so with every respect, all I noticed was they were trying to cram things in before, is it September next year? Or is it June next year? I can't remember. It's September this year, so oh. September this year they're going to stop. Uh, NIC ERC have decided to stop letting short course people get approved contractor status I think or I even think domestic, domestic installer really, as yeah, well just not letting them on the seat, um, <sighs> so they have to provide more than just evidence that they've done a short course they have to actually provide evidence of experience I think that's kind of what it's going to be and based on I was reading the EAS document I was reading it in a hurry um, I mean I don't know why I hurried I had so much time <laughs> and it was basically saying that they count like recognized prior learning and all these other things at the minute and the short courses but from september they're not going to do that i think if you're already on a body they're not going to kick you off yeah exactly so it's probably not what a lot of the people in the industry are asking for um i'm not saying i'm one of those by the way i'm just saying it is a fact that in the industry plane um it'll be it's a plane this time there's massive ones 
a lot of people in the industry are very unhappy about those courses and I can understand, I can see it from both sides of the playing field. I, so I had to work really hard to get my MPQ and to get all the qualifications and bits that I've done. I did have to put a lot of work in, years of work. So I can see from both sides of the fence and I know there are some really, really good domestic installers out there. I, arguably there are a lot of domestic installers out there who are better than MBQ electricians. So I don't know, what's your opinion on it? Do you think it's a good thing for the industry? It's really, really difficult because I can see both sides because um, it is dangerous to let people go on their own who haven't got the experience, even if they've got the qualifications. Like, I know the guys here, like, I was talking to some of the guys this week, and you know, it's a, it's a hard slog. It's like an 18 week course. And no, that's, it's, that's not the one that it, they're talking about. Though. I don't think that would count as a short course. Mm. Some of the courses that they offer are literally three or four weeks or two weeks on some of them. Oh, I got a notification. Okay. Do you know Instagram listens to your conversations, oh. which I always find super weird. Really? Yeah, the advertising always. You need to test it. Oh, man. Honestly, people in the comments, this is not just me, this is a fact. They listen. Um, and I was talking about short courses. I've never Googled it, I've never whatever. I was talking about, oh, it's you know, it's crazy how people can call themselves an electrician in 10 days. And, and I'm saying all of this, I go on my phone, what's advertised? Become an electrician in 10 days. That's and I nice. click on the link and it is, it's like, oh yeah, we'll yeah. smash you through your 18th edition, which a librarian can pass the 18th edition. Yeah. It doesn't tell, you don't need to be an electrician to understand the 18th edition. It, you just need to know how to navigate a book. Um, how to use an index and content page, you know. Um, 18th edition part P, which again, it's not going to teach you anything about electrics, it's just it might teach you drilling zones and one part of the building regulations, and that's it, you, you know. That's, yeah. I, I, I think it would be a good thing for the industry. I think the only people that need to panic about them tightening up, not qualifications, but just entry criteria, is the people who are probably on the wrong side of the fence, who are working unregistered, unqualified. So I don't think anyone that's actually legit in the industry need to worry. Um, yeah. And it's just going to mean that whoever you know does come into the industry will have, to, uh, in terms of like getting an ICE, ICE approved, will have to have more experience, which is only a good thing, isn't it? At the end of the day. Yeah. Um, and it just it's going to be harder work for them to get there, but hopefully it'll improve the, the overall standard of NICEIC approved contractors because that's the issue at the moment is that there's the NICEIC name has kind of been flushed down the toilet yeah. a little bit by all the bad installs that are done by NICEIC approved contractors. And um, I don't know about you, but I, I'm feeling very um, cynical. Like the NIC has got to be a multi-million pound corporation. Yeah, and they're all hand in hand with each yeah, other as do, well. Do you all think these they're really not going to, to they're, they're not going to lose millions of pounds or hundreds of thousands of pounds of subscriptions and works. Ultimately, they're a business. Yes, yeah, the uh, they've got such a conflict of interest. They get paid by their memberships. Well, they're, they're running. Club. They're running a lot of the short courses. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, so. it's just, I, I think it's, they're going to make loopholes for people. It's inevitable because they're not going to turn down the membership money, are they? Yeah. What we need is a government or state-run non like no conflict of interest just a generic license you can either get it or you can't you're qualified or you're not that's really how it needs to be like gas or gas safe as soon as it becomes a club where you pay to join it you've got a huge conflict of interest like you're going to yeah. want people to join you the more members you get the more money you make i was talking to an american electrician the other day and he was so shocked when i told him that you can do like a, a few week course and then go out and start your own electrical business he couldn't believe it do you know what they had more emphasis i felt because i had looked through some of their brochures there on their short courses mm. they had more emphasis on how to get your website set up once you pass the course and to get your business and brand name and logo done yeah. than actually continued professional development and the things that really matter it's like you're going to come out there with a slick van and like tons and tons of debt in finance on your van and courses and books and everything else but actually not really be fully competent and ready because you've not got the experience working with someone yeah i i can see it from both sides and let me know in the comments guys what you think about this but um there's definitely a, a big debate about it at the moment quite a few of these guys they're 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 coming out of the army they're retiring from the army but they need a new career and so they're looking to be an electrician. I, my heart goes out to them, you know, yeah, and I think I it's that, great. Yeah. It's a great career to have, but it's just how to get into it. 
in a way that you get the experience it's and not, the qualification at the same time. It's not the people that upset me with the courses. Like if you're an, a Spark or an ex um, Marine or whatever it is, and you're going into that training, a fair play to you. It, they, how are they going to know any different? What annoys me is a lot of the providers, even like the NIC training courses, where they promise them something so that they expect to get more out of it than what they're actually getting. They expect to get full competency and often a lot of them are left disillusioned. They leave and then they feel like, oh, actually, I'm not experienced. I need to get experience first before I can work for myself. And yeah. That's where it's unfair, yeah. really. It's the, I, I don't think the issue lies with the people. The issue... The no, you're you're going to get put on the providers. You're going to get in trouble, mate. I'm the definitely going to yeah. pull over now. So, I'm back home. I've got proper coffee again. That is something that I missed a lot. But I tell you what, it was a good week. We had fun on that course. It was interesting and we learned a lot. So all in all, I can say it was a really successful week because right now I'm sitting in front of my computer back in my home office, planning our first solar installs and using all the stuff that I learned in class now in the real world to plan some of our first jobs going forward. So hopefully we'll have some solar installs to share with you guys coming forward on the channel. I've got a really exciting one that I'm planning at the moment, which is by the seaside. So we might even have a trip to the beach to install solar panels on somebody's roof by the seaside. So looking forward to that. Hope you enjoy this little journey, this little vlog with us. If you've got any questions about solar that you'd like us to answer, leave them all below in the comments and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.